Hey guys, welcome to the Simplify Your Life podcast. It's Coach Simona and I'm glad you decided to tune in. What's up everyone? In today's podcast episode, we're going to talk about how to stop letting others control your emotions. And I will share with you six tips on how to stop being an emotional sponge by learning to detach yourself from other people's negative emotions. Now let's start from the very beginning. Before we work on how to stop absorbing other people's negative emotions, we need to get clear about one thing first. Why are you an emotional sponge? There are many reasons why you may be an emotional sponge, but I will discuss some of the most common ones. The first one is that at a very young age, you may have been assigned the role of taking care of a parent or a close relative. This does not necessarily mean you had to physically take care of them because they were ill, But more likely, you had to cater to their needs before thinking about your own. Maybe they had narcissistic tendencies or were depressed, and you needed to prioritize their emotions over yours in order to survive. Another reason you may be absorbing other people's negative emotions is because growing up, you were too enmeshed with other members of your family. What does being enmeshed actually mean? Well, maybe you were codependent and you never really developed healthy boundaries with your primary caregivers, so their emotions and experiences became yours. And the last most common reason why you may be an emotional sponge is because you're highly sensitive by nature. Actually, that's the main reason why I had a hard time standing up for myself and I let others control my emotions for a very long time. I've always been highly perceptive and sensitive. As a child, I noticed that I felt things more deeply than my peers. I cried to romantic movies, when I saw small animals, or frankly, for no apparent reason whatsoever. So, being an emotional sponge may not be due to poor upbringing, but simply because you are sensitive by nature. Now, let's get into my first tip on how to stop letting others control your emotions. Tip number one. Ask yourself, is this my emotion or is it someone else's? When you're an emotional sponge, you're absorbing other people's feelings. And at some point, it's difficult to establish which ones are yours and which ones are not. So by asking yourself this question, you can quickly determine what's going on inside and whether or not you've been accumulating emotions and opinions that are simply not yours. Now, if you're not sure whether the emotion is yours or not, maybe you need to work on grounding yourself and becoming more aware of the sensations in your body, which actually leads me to tip number two. Ground yourself by focusing on your breath. This is the quickest and easiest way to stop letting others control your emotions. By tuning into your body, you'll discover what sensations are passing through your body, and the greatest shortcut is to simply focus on your breath. There are many ways you can focus on your breath, but you can start by closing your eyes, taking a few deep belly breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. You can also put your hand on your stomach or your chest, so you can actually feel the sensation of your breath moving through your body. You can also try different breathing exercises to strengthen your connection to your body. I've done several podcast episodes on this topic, so I'm not going to get into them now. Another way you can focus on your breath is through meditation. I've been meditating for more than 1,500 days straight, and it completely changed my life. I actually made a podcast episode a while ago on what I learned from 1,000 days of meditation, so check out episode 55 if you want to learn my greatest takeaways from daily meditating. My next tip is to let go of the need to be validated. One of the reasons you may be letting others control your emotions is because you care too much about what they think. If you're an emotional sponge, other people can sense that and take advantage of you. So it's important to set healthy boundaries by learning how to say no in situations that don't serve you. For example, let's say you're out with some friends that are talking about politics, they had a few drinks, and the situation is getting pretty heated. The truth is, you're not interested in debating or politics for that matter, and you're starting to feel anxious and overwhelmed with all the negative energy in the room. So what can you do in this situation? You can go to the bathroom to freshen up and disengage from the situation. You can try to change the subject, or if you're no longer having fun at the table, you can simply pay and go home to get some rest. If you want to learn how to say no in pretty much any situation you can think of with real-life examples, check out my YouTube video on how to say no without feeling guilty. I will link it below. Tip number four is to imagine there is an invisible shield around you protecting you from other people's feelings. This may sound a little bit woo-woo at first, but trust me, it works. 
The power of visualization will help you ease a little bit and feel more secure even if somebody's presence is making you feel uncomfortable or overwhelmed. Here's how this exercise works. When you're in a situation that feels charged with negative emotions and you want to feel less stressed out, simply imagine that there is an invisible shield around you. Some people like to imagine a white light that's protecting their body from harm. Others like to see it as a wall. No matter what it is, try it out for yourself and see if it works. Tip number five on how to stop letting others control your emotions is to distance yourself from the person if possible. If you can't distance yourself by walking away or leaving the room, because for example your boss is acting like an emotional vampire, or you're at a Christmas table with your entire family and they become too overwhelming to bear, you can try to distance yourself physically, meaning step away from them a little bit or put an object between you, or maybe move your chair in the opposite direction. If the situation allows it, you can excuse yourself and go to the restroom, or ideally, diffuse the negativity by leaving the room and talking to them later when you sense that they have calmed down. It's important to protect your energy at all costs, and if you feel drained by other people's emotions, recharge your batteries before coming in close contact with them again. Tip number six is to practice stoicism. If you're not familiar with Stoicism, it's an ancient school of philosophy all about non-reactivity. According to its teachings, the path to happiness can be found in accepting the moment as it is, by not allowing yourself to be controlled by your emotions and using your mind to understand the world. Now, the quickest way to practice Stoicism is to accept reality as it is and let go of your resistance. A part of your pain comes from needing to escape a situation that's overwhelming you and you feel like an emotional sponge that's absorbing other people's emotions. If you let go of your resistance, that's the easiest way to stop reacting and start observing. When you detach yourself from the situation and see things objectively as an observer, you will feel less pain and suffering, and you will also be able to see the situation for what it truly is, without judging them for being negative or you for being too receptive of their emotions. If you want to learn my favorite Stoic practices, listen to episode 89 next, which is all about practicing Stoicism for beginners. I will leave a link below. Thank you so much for listening. If you found this episode helpful, please like it. And subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on my weekly podcast episodes. I love you guys, and I'll talk to you in the next one.